Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're also going to stick to my home county of Skåne here in the very south of the country. For this review, we're returning to a brewery who have featured on the channel a good number of times before and we're having a look at another one of their trademark Imperial Stouts. But this is one that I think will be a little bit different and quite interesting actually. And these guys, of course, are one of the most highly rated and highly decorated craft breweries here in Sweden. So definitely worth checking out if you come across their beers. They're starting to get out there a little bit more to the rest of Europe at the moment. So for this review then, we are going to head down to Malmö about 10 or 15 kilometers to the south of me here in Lund and we're having a look at another beer from Nerd Brewing. This one is simply called This. It's an Imperial Wheat Stout coming in at 11% ABV and interestingly it has been hickory wood aged and I can't remember for certain, I can't remember 100% but I'm 95% sure that I have never had a hickory wood aged Imperial Stout before. Um, you know, as I say, I've done 2,300 reviews now. It's quite possible that I have done one and just forgotten about it because, you know, there's probably about 500, something like that. There's probably about 500 Imperial Stout reviews on the channel. Maybe a bit, maybe that's an exaggeration, but who knows. But, um, yeah, it should add a little bit of like an interesting spice or whatever to the, uh, the base of this one, actually. But very, very curious to see how this one turns out and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. Big thank you, of course, to Hannes Gruber, the owner of Nerd Brew who gave me this beer when I did my interview with him about a month or so ago it was now um, and this is one that he was um, he was almost a little bit apprehensive about it actually I saw this one he'd given me a few bottles and I saw this one I just said to him, can I take one of these? Because I thought, you know, this would be really interesting, an Imperial Wheat Stout. And he was almost a little bit apprehensive about it, actually. But, uh, you know, knowing this brewery, I think that it, it will be a pretty damn good beer, actually. So I'm really, really curious about this one, because as I said, it is quite different to the other ones that we've had before. An Imperial Wheat Stout. So you don't see too many of these. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed it's another good beer. Knowing Nerd, I'm pretty sure it will be. But let's see how we get on with it. And I hope that you guys enjoy Enjoy my take on this one as well. So as always with my reviews then, I'll take you through a little bit of a history of the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Nerd Brewing before. No doubt you will see a few more from these guys in the near future. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, or whatever it is that takes your fancy. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit, about Nerd Brewing then, on to my brewery notes. So Nerd Brewing, as I've told you before, are based in Malmö in Skåne in the very south of Sweden and the company was founded by Hannes Gruber and Karin Carlsson back in 2015 and this was when they had their premiere at the Malmö Ull and Whiskey Festival and both of these guys were big beer enthusiasts and they just wanted to kind of get into the industry. Hannes had been a home brewer for a long time and he got very good feedback on the beers that he was making and so this inspired him to start up his own company and go for it professionally. So he comes from a background in software development, hence why a lot of his beer Years have programming related names but he takes care of the brewing side of things or he was taking care of the brewing side of things originally while Karen was an entrepreneur and also a trader in the IT industry and she was managing the business side of the brewery but she's not part of the company anymore from what I understand she got given a very good job and so she just didn't have time to take part in Nerd Brewing anymore so it is now just Hannes who is managing the Nerd Brewing beer brand um, but they started up with a very modest production capacity and they've now become the most highly rated brewery in Sweden on Untapped, save for a few of the um, the, the meaderies, if you like. So, um, yeah, there's that whole debate. Is mead beer? But regardless, mead is pretty damn awesome, I have to say. So a couple of the meaderies, I think, are ha more highly rated than Nerd Brewing, but these guys are the most highly rated beer brewery, if you like, uh, on Sweden, or from Sweden, on Untapped, I should say. Um, but most of these beers... I think pretty much all of them, to be honest with you, are brewed at Lila Fabriken, uh, Lila Ur Fabriken and Chad Beer, and some uh, one or two next door in South Plains. In this brewery, you can find, in uh, sort of in the kind of 
towards Rosengard in Malmö. I forget what the name of that area is exactly, uh, actually, but I was there to film my review with Hannes. And this company is now officially joined with Chad Beer and Lila Ulfabriken, but they do all three of these guys sell their beers under their own brands. The official name of the company is Lila Ulfabriken, which is basically the little beer factory, which is kind of apt, of course. But as I say, each uh, brand releases beers under their different under different names. Uh, but these guys have been uh, experimenting a little bit more with different styles recently. Of course, they're trademark style is the Imperial Stouts. Um, they have released one or two barley wines. Um, they released the Switch New England IPA, which was a beautiful, beautiful beer. The Finally Barley Wine, like I said, uh, was a really, really nice one. I got that just to have something a little bit different. From, uh, from their brewing and it was really really very very nice and um, yeah uh, for a long time this brewery were really it was really hard to get a hold of their beers and other uh, than some festivals in Sweden um, you had to go to you know Shiosk or to Glassbanken or something like that one of the beer services from Denmark to get a hold of their beers but from 2018 they started selling some of their beers through Systembolaget the state owned monopoly in Sweden and as of July 2020 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced 75 different types of beer the vast majority of them, of course, are Imperial Stouts, but you will find a few other things in there as well. And I do have another style of beer to review from them very, very soon, so you'll see that one coming up uh, a little bit later on, actually. But, um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Nerd Brewing for the moment. You know, um, these guys, it's one of the things I find about this brewery is that you always get, like, really, really damn good Imperial Stouts, and it's very difficult to pick a favourite because they are all, you know, very, very good and also very, very kind of unique at the same time so um, yeah people have asked me what are my favourite beers from Nerd Brewing and it's I think that's a very difficult um, question to answer you know it's it's kind of it it's really is a very very difficult one for me to answer because all of the beers that I've had from these guys have been pretty damn solid actually so um, yeah that's all I can really tell you about Nerd Brewing for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys of course you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about the different beers you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date of the latest goings on and of course you can have a look at their website and stuff. One of the things to point out about this, uh, this brewery is that the whole thing open source beer. So this is something that Hannes started as a home brewer and he says that um, you know he wanted basically to share his um, his recipes with people so if you have a particular recipe that you're interested from their brewing you can contact them and, uh, and ask them about it and he will send you it. He tries to keep all of them up to date on the website but he is a very very busy man so some of the beer recipes are not there so you know he says just email him and ask him for it if uh, there's one in particular that you're interested in that's not there. So um, yeah let's get on and have a taste of this one then. So as I said to you earlier this one is an 11% imperial wheat stout hickory barrel aged or hickory wood aged so I think that should be really interesting. I'm not sure if it was hickory chips or something like that that was put into this one but um, yeah you can see here it says brewed at Lila Ulfabriken in Malmö, uh, Sweden. So um, yeah it should be really really quite nice this one as I say. I'm, this was one that I'm just very very curious about you know an imperial wheat stout you don't come across these too often but there you can see the nerd brewing symbol on this one which again is very very nice. So um, yeah let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting then. I'm very curious to see what this beer has in store for us an imperial wheat stout 11% and it's nerd brewing of course I think it should be nice as I said to you this beer was very kindly given to me by Hannes when I filmed my meet the brewery segment with him which was great and um, yeah we sat down and talked for about an hour about different beers we had the the sensor lights in the the brewery going off when we were filming the review which was quite funny but um, yeah he gave me a couple of bottles of beer and you see me review most of them now, um, so he gave me a couple of bottles uh, to review and he, um, you know, this is one that I saw, I actually saw this one, I was like, oh that sounds really interesting, can I have one of these? I was a bit cheeky and I said, can I have one of these? And he was like, oh yeah, and he was, as I say, he was a little bit apprehensive because he was like, oh I wasn't sure about, you know, marketing an imperial wheat stout and, um, you know, um, he just they asked me, like, what would you think about that? And I said, well, everybody knows Nerd Brewing's good for stouts, you know, I would pay, I would get it because it's something a little bit different, a little bit interesting, so, um, yeah, that would be my motivation to buy this beer. And Imperial Wheat Stout, how often do you find something like this? But uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe he'll do this beer again. Who knows? He's experimenting all the time with these Imperial Stouts, of course. But yes, as you can see and as you would expect from this one, it's poured a lovely dark ebony rosewood colour. 
um, which you know is to be expected from an imperial stout. There was a solid like quarter finger of a frothy, very dark tan head on this one. It's faded away to be a very very thin foamy layer. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. A few little ones going up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know overall it does look pretty damn nice. I have to say it looks kind of exactly as you would expect from this particular beer style. One thing I have to admit I am kind of surprised about and kind of not surprised about is the head because normally um, I've been told by a lot of brewers and a lot of people that if you have more wheat in a beer a beer tends to retain its head a little bit more but you can see this one has just faded away in much the same way the others do but then remember this one is higher alcohol and the higher the alcohol the more difficult it is for a beer to maintain its head actually so just you know keep that in mind but um, yeah this one I think um, it, it's, there's nothing overly surprising about it in terms of its appearance other, other than that for me that the head doesn't retain a little bit more it is pretty much just a nice kind of dark tan sort of uh, foamy layer around the edge of the glass there but I like that if I shine the light through this one as I say there is a wee bit of a coca-cola coloured edge but it is pretty much um, ebony uh, you know pretty much black as night if you like so um, yeah I like how this one um, goes together I like that about it so um, yeah let's have a little look at the aroma then and see how we get on this is the part I'm very curious about with this one the hickory elements let's see oh yeah so the one thing I've always found with the Nerd Brewing beers is that they do, even if it's a milk stout, um, you know, if it's one of the sweeter stouts, it always has a little bit of a roasty, toasty edge to it. I found that Hannes does like to stick to that. I think, I suspect he told me that he likes to use special bee malt in his beers. And, um, you know, I suspect that the roasty, toasty edge does come from that, the special bee malt. So wh whatever beer you do have, even if it is a, a stout that sounds as if it will be a little bit sweeter, you will always get a little bit of that kind of dark black roasty toasty thing out of it which I think is nice it lets you know this is an imperial stout um, but yeah straight away with this one um, you can smell that lovely kind of slightly spicy note from the hickory in here you can smell that lovely kind of woody base to it and it's just it just comes across as a little bit more kind of rough and rustic almost compared to um, some of the other beers. I can't remember how many of the barrel aged beers that I've had from Nerd before because um, he's got a couple, I think he had about six barrels there in the brewery when we were filming so um, yeah there were about six breweries, uh, six barrels there um, so I've not I've not actually had too many of the um, of the barrel aged beers come to think of it but this one to me it does strike me as being a little bit more kind of rustic and the woody notes are just a little bit more kind of spicy and that's forming the backbone of the beer it's almost got a little bit of a kind of leathery it has almost got just a little touch of a leathery note to it but yeah quite a, a kind of rusticy spicy woody type character comes out of this one I do like that about this beer um, yeah, the hickory for me really stands out. I like, you know, that's, it's, as I say, hickory barrel aged. This isn't something you're going to come across all that often, but to me it really does kind of stick out with this one. The woody notes that come out of this beer are really, really very nice. So for me, there's a nice high percentage cocoa chocolate to this one. You've got, you know, about a, a seven, probably at least an 80% cocoa chocolate coming out of this beer, which I really like. There is a few, there are a few elements of more milky chocolate to it, but definitely the, the chocolatey notes that come out of this are very high percentage cocoa um, and I do like that about um, I do like that about this one um, yeah this one's very it, it's, it's, it, it really is um, I think compared to the other ones I've had it's the woodiness that really does stick out to me on that and as I say it's, this is something a bit unique so that's probably why but yeah the, the way that the dark roasty chocolate kind of mixes in with the woody qualities is very nice there is a wee touch of a kind of brown bready quality to this one like a sort of well fired bread crust sort of thing a bit of kind of German brown bread it does have a wee bit of that vibe to it but not too much um, it almost has a little bit of a slightly coffee-ish smoothness to it, but not the coffee-ish notes that you get out of this are not as prominent as um, as you're going to find from, you know, the, like the last one they had, the Index uh, Out of Bounds, the Vietnamese Coffee Edition. Um, the, you know, it, it does have a little bit of that coffee-ish smoothness to it, but I'm not convinced that it's, um, that it is kind of straight up coffee, um, if that makes sense. This beer doesn't have coffee in it as far as I know. 
But yeah, there is a good bit of a brown sugary note to this one. It's got a bit of a treacly molasses kind of thing. Quite, a, It's almost like a kind of well-fired treacly molasses sort of thing as well. You get that right in the middle of the nose. Underneath that, you've got the kind of you know, really high percentage cocoa chocolate in there. Then you've got a bit of the, underneath that, you've got the kind of well-fired bread crust. And then the woody notes are just kind of forming the backbone of the beer. I'm surprised a little bit that the breadiness isn't a wee bit more prominent. I would have thought that with it being a wheat stout, the breadiness might have been a little bit more kind of prominent in the aroma, but I'm guessing it'll maybe come out a little bit more in the flavour, to be honest. Um, it probably will do, to be honest. But yeah, there is, um, there's almost a wee tiny hint of like a, t a slightly tobacco-y type note out of this one, but that's quite minimal for me. It really is very woody and spicy, as I say, but the aroma that comes out of this beer is very very nice actually. On the hoppy side of things you've got a good little bit of earthiness there and um, there's a wee touch of a floral character as well and some light grassiness but for me the hops are mainly slightly darker and earthy and now we need to look at the fruity side of things. Um, so for me the fruits are they're not overly prominent I mean it's got a little bit of a kind of raisiny sharpness to it um, yeah it's got a little bit of a raisiny note to it some nice black currantty and blackberry qualities um, and you've got a few kind of plummy notes in there as well. So I'd say mainly raisins and black currants, blackberries, but there is a wee bit of a slightly juicier plum note in the background too. So um, yeah, I like, I do like how that side of the beer um, goes together actually. So for me, this one is, is quite nice. It's the spiciness, as I say, the real unique thing about this one in terms of its aroma is the woody qualities and the spiciness. I'm, I thought the wheat might have made it a little bit more bready than it actually comes across as being in the aroma, but we'll see how that translates into the flavour. So yeah, take a bit of time to enjoy the aroma of this before you get stuck in. You'll always get a beautiful aroma out of the Nerd Brewing beers, but this one is simply called This, an Imperial Wheat Stout at 11% ABV, aged uh, with hickory wood so this one will be pretty damn interesting thank you to Hannes for giving me this beer to review and I hope as I say that you guys enjoy this video let's get stuck into this one Slange Skull yeah oh nearly dropped the glass there got a fright <laughs> but yeah for me, this one, this strikes me as being one of the smoothest stouts that I've had from Nerd Brewing. I think this one might be the kind of smoothest and most oily stout that I've had from them so far. Yeah. In terms of mouthfeel, I've got a feeling this one, it just strikes me as being so smooth, so slick, and just, you know, it's got a lovely oiliness to it. So I would say um, that this could be the best mouthfeel I've had from their brewing so far in terms of the, the Imperial Stout style, actually. But this is another solid, solid beer, actually. Um, it comes across, the other impression I have of it straight away is that it comes across as very infused, more so than... Um, than the other ones I've had. The other ones come across as, um, they're a little bit kind of, they're almost just a little bit more raw, if that makes sense. Um, this one almost, it's not, and that's the, the thing is, this one's not like barrel aged from what I understand or anything. It's just, it's the, it's the, um, the it's the hickory wood. Um, and I suppose, I actually don't, I actually don't know what the deal is with the, the hickory wood if it is um, it just says hickory wood aged and I would guess I don't think he had a hickory barrel I think it would be like chips or something maybe he has put it into an oak barrel and then put the hickory chips in that would make sense um, but the smoothness you get out of this beer and the level of in, 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 infused infuse, infusion yeah you see the level of infusion my English is getting terrible these days the level of infusion that this beer has in its flavours is great. This the, it gets a big thumbs up from me, this one. This is definitely one of the ones uh, that's a little bit more subtle, I think. It's definitely got a lot, a lot more kind of subtleties to it compared to the other stouts I've had from there before. But yeah, I like this one. Um, where to start with this? Where to start with this? I mean, straight away, the, the, the middle third of your tongue and the back third of your tongue, you get that woody quality just blanketing um, your palate. And as you can feel as you go further into the aftertaste, you do get a little bit of that kind of 
woody smoothness that you would normally get from oaky notes in there. So you do have that, but then you can feel um, the, the beer, it does just get a little bit more, it's just got a little bit of a kind of spicy note to it. It's almost like a slightly peppery spice that you get out of the woodiness in this one, which is, is very interesting. So it's cool to see how that kind of interacts with kind of the roasty uh, black malts, the ESB malts that are, uh, are in this one. It, it really gives you a lovely kind of smoothness. The beer has a very, very smooth um, backbone actually in my mind. Yeah, this one, um, it's lovely. It really is lovely. Um, so yeah, as I say, the main thing you're going to notice, the main feature about this beer is that roasty, um, it is that kind of, how do you say, that lovely um, kind of woody backbone that it has. It just gets, it's still got smoothness to it, but it does get a little touch more spicy the further that you go into uh, it's it's just a little bit more spicy the further that you go into the um into the aftertaste. I really like that about it. Um but yeah if you go towards the um the, the back of the uh, the back third of your tongue there, you will notice that it is a little bit kind of thicker and almost bready. I think there's more of the wheaty notes coming out of this one, but it doesn't really have like a bitiness to it or anything. It is more just kind of thicker and brown bready. There is a wee bit of a kind of um bread crusty quality to it I have to say it does have a nice little bit of a bread crusty quality but um yeah other than that it's quite um you know it is quite sort of straight up almost it is quite you know, straight up in 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 the back of the, the palette there. Um it's hard to kind of get your head around this one a little bit because it is just so nice and infused but yeah back third of your tongue the kind of sort of spice you got the, the nice kind of hickory wood a little bit of the spiciness in there then on top of that you get this lovely kind of brown bready quality and on top of that it's just got a little bit of a well fired bread crusty type thing but if you go into the middle of the palate the middle third of your tongue that's where the big levels of complexity um, come out of this one and that's what I really like about this so yeah middle of your palate then you can feel middle third of your tongue you've got that lovely kind of hickory slightly spicy woody base to the beer you've almost got a little bit of an island in the middle of your palate too there so you get a little bit of a kind of you can feel the kind of chocolatey notes coming out of this one it's got almost an island and that island is like um it's got a little bit of that kind of dark chocolatey note like a sort of 80 90 percent cocoa thing there and it does get a little bit more bitter you can feel the further you go into the aftertaste you will get a bit more of the the kind of bitter element coming out of this but yeah you've got an 80% cocoa chocolate roughly sitting there on top of that you do get some brown sugars it's got a bit of a toasty well fired treacly molasses kind of thing and it does get a wee bit sweeter the further that you go towards the the center of your palate but as you move towards the kind of front of that uh, middle third of your tongue it has got a few little kind of woody um, you know, not woody sorry leathery elements coming out of it it does have a little touch of a leathery quality if you go to the front corners of your palate then go back a little bit diagonally it does have a few sort of um, leathery elements to it which is quite interesting yeah the leathery notes are quite subtle I think and they sort of make blend in well with the woody side of the beer but um, yeah as you move further forward uh, from the cent if you go to the very centre of your palate, you will get this the slightly s the more sweeter caramel note out of this one. But as you go right further forward from that, it does have a wee touch of a. Uh, um, there is a wee tiny, tiny little bit of vanilla note there. That's the thing that I think you're not getting from the hickory in this one is the, um, you know, is the the vanilla element to it. Um, so yeah, I think that this one is quite. Uh, I think it's quite good that way. Um, I like how it all goes. I like how that that goes together in this one. It's definitely more uh, the woodiness you get with this one is distinctively more spicy. The whole base of the beer almost has a little bit of a kind of slightly pepperyish quality to it. But then you've got other little subtle elements to this one as well. For me, the the two main things to take from this beer are the the smoothness and the slickness that it has, and um, but also the slightly spicy, more spicy note of the uh, the woody characters, and I really like that pardon me about this one so big thumbs up from me I have to say I do like how this um, I do like how this one goes together actually it's, it's got a lovely um, it's got a lovely combination of flavors for me so big thumbs up to uh, to nerd brewing for this one I think they've done a great job with it a 
but yeah awesome stuff the malt base and the woody base in this is really nice let's focus on the hoppy side of things back corners of the palate there's a lovely little bit of earthiness there it's got quite a strong earthiness actually too which is quite nice gives the beer a good bit of bitterness to counter the, the black malts and things but as you move further forward along the sides of the palate that bitterness it does linger there but then it smoothens out a little bit you get some nice floral notes on the front corners of the palate then round the very front curve of the tongue it's just a little bit lighter and more uh, and more grassy in my mind. And then behind the front curve of the palate, on that front third of the tongue, that's where you get the nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters start to um, to push their way out of the beer. So for me, this one um, is interesting. The fruity side of it as well. So yeah, when you take it in. It is distinctively plummy. I thought in the aroma it would have a little bit of a raisiny sharpness to it, but I really find the fruity side of this beer to be more kind of plummy and juicy and that sits all across the um that kind of goes all across the um how do you say it? the the front third of your tongue it is like a kind of juicy slightly oily plummy quality but as you reach the front kind of tip of your tongue there's a bit of a black currenty blackberry-ish sort of flavor comes out of the beer as well so yeah it's got that um element to it as well i would say and i like i do like that about how this one um, about how it goes together in that sense. So yeah, thumbs up to uh, to Nair Broom and that. The fruitiness is quite simple in this one compared to some of the other ones, but it really works quite well. You've got that border area between the front third of your tongue and the second third of your tongue as well. And again, you get that, it's almost like the kind of really toasty, well-fired edge of a brownie. It's really got that kind of vibe going on there. So between the fruity side of the beer and the more malty, woody side of the beer, you've got this really well-toasty, well-fired brownie type flavour coming out of this one. So um yeah, I like how um I do like how that um side of it goes together. So um yeah the flavour the flavour on this beer really is very very nice. Let's focus on the mouthful then we've covered the flavour quite in depth now. So as I said this beer it's very very full bodied. The carbonation is very smooth. It's really a hugely thick um oily but also at the same time very very slick Imperial stout for me. I think this is the most oily and slick um Imperial Stout that I've had from their brewing so far actually. This is the one that's impressed me um, most on its mouthfeel. I think this is my favourite mouthfeel from an Aird brewing uh, Imperial Stout so far. So big thumbs up to them for that. In terms of IBUs, this one's got to be about you know 80. I would think this is about an 80 IBU. So I think it actually says on the bottle, does it? Oh, it says 65. Ah, I would have thought this was a bit more. I would have thought this was 80 actually but um, yeah I suppose in fairness it makes sense with the level of smoothness that the beer has so yeah 65 IBUs this one um, apparently I would as I say I would have thought it was a little bit more but the uh, as I say the malt base and the woodiness there's a little bit of spiciness to the woody base of the beer but other than that the malt base is very smooth it does have a degree of sweetness but I think as is always the case with Nerd Brewing their beers do tend to lean a little bit towards the kind of roasty toasty side of things because that, that just seems to be their trademark but uh, yeah it definitely has a bit of that thing in there that lets you know I am an imperial stout which I like um, but yeah you've got a lovely kind of um, you have got a lovely hoppy um, note to it which I, I do like out of this one it's very um, you, it's, it's got a nice little bit of bitterness from the hops especially the earthiness but the fruitiness as I say is a little bit more kind of oily and simple I think compared to the other um, stouts that I've had from there brewing already but yeah a beautiful beautiful beer this one the imperial wheat stout I think the wheat a combination of the wheat and the hickory you know really is giving it the smoothness there so I think the key thing with the wheat in this is that it is quite it is just smoothening the beer out um, really really quite nicely um, so I would have thought it would be a little bit more bready in terms of the flavour but I think the wheat really is acting as more of a kind of smoothening agent rather than anything else but I tell you something it's another cracking beer from there brewing and as I said to Hannes when he gave me this one you know you know that uh, when you when you buy an air brewing beer you're going to get a good quality imperial stout and this one's no exception to that i think it's the mouthfeel and the woody characters that really make this one a little bit sort of quirky and unique so yeah if you do come across this one have a go at it i'm not sure how likely you are to find this one i think hannes only had like one case of it left in the brewery i'm not sure if it had been sold through glass bank and chiosk and things like that but yeah i'm not sure how likely you how likely it is that you'll find this one but yeah it was one that i saw 
when I was in the brewery and it really just kind of caught my interest and he gave me a bottle so yeah another nerd brewing review for you and which is which is always fun to do but um, yeah let's leave it at that for this one once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from Nerd Brewing. No doubt we will return to these guys at some point in the near future. I do have uh, a special beer to review from them quite soon. You'll see that maybe in the next week or two. But thank you again for watching. This beer was simply called This, uh, an 11% Imperial Wheat Stout aged on Hickory Wood from Nerd Brewing, one of the top rated Swedish breweries based in Malmö and Skåne here in the south of Sweden. Thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. Slange, skål, cheers, catch you later. Bye.